First to tour, President Biden uses a new face mask policy to convince more Americans to get vaccinated. We're following new anguish after the private autopsy results for Andrew Brown Jr., who was shot by sheriff's deputies. Today, the federal government is responding. And the cheerleader, social media, and the Supreme Court. What you need to know about a case that could affect students for generations to come. Hey, Ben, sure feels like summer out there. Sure does, Karen. Some of us in the 80s already. We'll see if we hit that record today, where we go tomorrow, and the thunderstorms coming with it. All right now, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, President Joe Biden has unveiled some new perks for Americans who get their COVID vaccines. Maybe the biggest change involves being able to ditch your face mask under certain circumstances. The CDC says if you are fully vaccinated, you don't need to wear a face mask outside unless you're in a big crowd of strangers like at a concert or festival. Then you still need to wear your mask. If you're vaccinated, you can also go maskless in small outdoor gatherings like picnics with other vaccinated people. It's the new balancing act of safety and freedom. We've posted the do's and don'ts at clickondetroit.com. The president says it just makes sense to get vaccinated. The bottom line is clear. If you're vaccinated, you can do more things more safely, both outdoors as well as indoors. For, so for those who haven't gotten their vaccination yet, especially if you're younger or think you don't need it, this is another great reason to go get vaccinated. New at 5, we'll bring Dr. McGeorge into the conversation to talk about some other changes and some of that data behind today's decision. Also today, Cedar Point Amusement Park is making a change in its face mask policy. This summer, the park says visitors will not have to wear masks on rides. Plus, it won't require masks outdoors unless it's impossible to maintain social distancing of six feet. Masks are still required for indoor attractions for anyone 10 years and older, the Ohio Park opens for the new season next month. Well, we might have some encouraging signs in Michigan's latest COVID surge. Today, the state is reporting more than 3,600 new cases of the virus. That's about 1,500 less than we saw one week ago. Also, the seven-day positivity rate is down to 11%. It was 13% last Tuesday. Sadly, the state is reporting another 105 deaths, and that includes 48 from a vital re records review. Family tragedy over in Eaton County has taken a new turn as a possible triple murder. You might recall the story of 47 year old Joseph Lockleitner and his two small children. Investigators thought the father killed the children and then turned the gun on himself. It happened a few weeks ago in Delta Township, just west of Lansing. Well, now the case is being pursued as a murder investigation. We're not getting a lot of details, but detectives say this was not a random act of violence. We've got a crew this afternoon working the story, asking more questions, and we'll have an update for you when you see us at 5. State Representative Joelle Jones faced a judge today in connection to a crash on I-96 in Livingston County. Jones appeared briefly via Zoom this morning for a probable cause conference. He faces several charges, including resisting and obstructing police, reckless driving, and drunk driving. He's due back in court on June 30th for a preliminary exam. Talk about a change in the weather. We went from spring to summer in about 24 hours. Ben, I have to admit, I ran to my closet. I'm like, I am going to dress appropriately for this warm, warm weather today. It's great. You did. You look fantastic. And I'll tell you, I wish we had more of this uh, throughout the week. Even though we'll be close tomorrow, uh, 79 is where we're at right now. You can see a couple spots in the south zone are in the low 80s. Jackson also at 80. The coolest location is 71 up in Sandusky. And remember yesterday at this time, you were in the 30s. So that is a huge temperature swing. You can see the differences in that uh, gorgeous shade of hot pink there, 25 to 30 degrees warmer than the numbers that we were looking at yesterday afternoon. So we are in record territory. We could still get a few more degrees, but we're likely going to fall short of that. But we do have rain on the way for the next two days, and thunderstorms will be part of that, especially tomorrow. We'll look at the timing and how intense those are going to be, and also what the weekend holds in just a few minutes. Karen? All right, thank you, Ben. The FBI is open, opening a federal civil rights investigation into the death of Andrew Brown Jr. The 42-year-old black man was shot and killed by police last week in North Carolina. Kimberly Gill joins us, and Kim, I understand Brown's family is also releasing the results of a private autopsy. 
They are. Brown's family hired its own private pathologist. They allowed their team of attorneys to share the results this morning in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. So according to the report, Brown was shot four times in the right arm and once in the back of his head. He was killed last Wednesday as deputies were attempting to serve a search warrant on drug sale charges. The family wants authorities to release the full body cam video of the shooting to the public. They say they were only allowed to view a redacted 20 second clip of the video yesterday. Now they're calling for justice and answers as to why deputies used deadly force. You don't have to be Democrat or Republican. You don't have to be white or black to realize that what this family has not gotten is justice. We demand justice from the sheriff's department. We demand justice from this district attorney. We demand justice not for anybody standing up here, but we demand justice for Andrew Brown and his family. The state's autopsy report has not been released. Meanwhile, seven deputies have been placed on administrative leave, while three have resigned. A hearing on the public release of the body cam video from the scene is set for tomorrow. We'll continue following this for you. Until then, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Well, the case of a high school cheerleader caught venting on social media is now being heard by the highest court in the land. Brandy Levi says she should not be punished for expressing herself while off campus. The school district doesn't agree. Paula Dutman spoke to local students about a Supreme Court battle that could affect them and all students in the future. This is a real talk about, Paula. Yeah, Karen, it really is, because when you think about the adage, we the people can say whatever the heck we want because of the First Amendment, this question actually becomes, okay, just because you can, does that mean you should? And is it really legal, particularly because the laws are a little different for public school students? It's like, okay, I put it in a private account, just me and my friends. But your friends turn into other friends, turn into other friends. It's not just me and my friends at this point, because I'm going to share it with a friend who's not in our friend group. In the Troy School District, students are proactively taught about the dangers of social media. I can take a screenshot of whatever's going on on my phone and I can send it, you know, to everybody. And it is a topic students understand very well. And you can bet they are current on the Supreme Court hearing the case of Pennsylvania ninth grader Brandy Levin, who was booted off her cheer squad. What this girl did was she posted it on her Snapchat story, which was private to so only her friends. So I think like because it was only private to a certain group of people, she should be allowed to do that. But if she like posted it on YouTube or somewhere where everybody can see, it shouldn't be allowed. This is Mrs. Cheryl Rosenblatt's hybrid personal money management class, but the topic of whether or not a school can take action against a teenager for what they post off school grounds and during their private time very much affects them all as well. You can say a lot of things, but when it comes to, you know, obscene words such as what this girl used with the F word, uh, you know, you're going to kind of get yourself into a lot of trouble. It's going to follow her in all of her colleges that she applies to. They do look into your like social medias. And that's why like schools are always telling you about what you post never actually goes away. Brian Wasson is with Warner Norcross and Judd attorneys at law in Southfield. When you are a kid, you have a somewhat more restricted personal liberty. If you if you speak in a manner that disrupts the the school environment, which is another highly important uh, service that the government provides, well, then those two freedoms, your freedom to speak your mind and the uh, the obligation of the government to provide educational services, they, they conflict with each other. But with a more conservative Supreme Court, the court has respect for. Uh, educational administrators and teachers, and I think they're going to be inclined to give them uh, a lot of leeway. But at the same time, a uh, conservative court is one that really respects the letter of the law and the letter of the First Amendment. And the First Amendment is, is awfully broad in protecting that liberty of speech. Okay, so just because the case is being heard today doesn't mean that we'll hear anything today. Obviously, it usually takes a while to render a decision, but keep in mind the Supreme Court won't look at this necessarily as this particular case. It tends to rule on a broader sense, understanding that this will set precedence for really generations to come, Karen, which goes back to the adage, just because you can say it doesn't mean you should. Conversation a lot of parents should be having with their kids. Good point. Thank you, Paula.
Still ahead, first at four, a boost to the minimum wage. Find out who is in line for a pay raise thanks to some new action from the White House. Also, do you have a real ID yet? We're going to take a look at how compliance is lagging, and there might be some relief for those who are not ready. Plus, bad behavior on the high seas. The story behind this video from the U.S. Navy. We've got news from around the world. First at four. Polio vaccinations skyrocketed after he rolled up his sleeve. Dr. McGeorge looks at who could have that impact with this virus. Tomorrow morning on 4.